Tim Quilty, MLC for Northern Victoria. Thanks for joining us on Flow. Uh, thanks for having me on. Liberal Democrats getting a little bit of publicity lately. Campbell Newman, former Liberal uh, LNP Premier uh, in Queensland, has decided he might well run for the LDP in the Senate in the next federal election. Why are Liberals switching to look at the LDP? Oh, look, um, the LDP has been around for a long time and it stands for uh, personal freedom and uh economic fiscal uh, responsibility, uh, smaller government, supporting small businesses. Um, so those are the things that the Liberal Party uh, has always claimed to support, but they, they do not. Uh, maybe they have once a time in the past, but they a long time ago. And uh, increasingly people in the Liberal Party are looking at their party and saying, I don't believe this anymore. And they're looking around with something else, and the Liberal Democrats are there with that message. So is there a fundamental difference between what the LDP stands for and what the Liberal Party stands for? So the, the, the Liberal Democrats are a freedom party. Basically. We, are, we libertarians. We think the government uh, is far too big and has far too much control in our lives. They take too much of our money um, and they uh, try and control us far too much. And you see just through these, uh, these uh, latest lockdowns how with the, the, uh, and the whole response to COVID, how we have this massive nanny state now that's going to control everyone. The Liberal Democrats aren't like that. We think people should be free to make their own choices. Well, on that topic of freedom, that um, phrase was used a lot at protests around um, our broadcast areas in the capital cities when it came to lockdowns and the anti-lockdown protests. Does the LDP have a view on those protests and whether we should be having lockdowns at the extent that we have been? Um, We definitely shouldn't be having the lockdowns that we've had. Um, Right from the start of this, our governments haven't uh, gone to persuasion, they've gone to coercion. They've locked people in their homes, they've imposed all these massive draconian uh, penalties on us all and instead of asking people to behave responsibly they've forced us and they've used the police to beat us to try and do it um those people going to protests uh, many of them are, are small business people at their wits end their business is crumbling under the pressure it's fine for people with public service jobs who get paid regardless but for people in the private sector um who are really really hurting um these things can't go on the way they are so absolutely we look um i'm not a fan of uh running around with masks with a mask on in the middle of a massive pandemic but some people have been pushed past the point and the government should never have forced us they should have asked us and when it comes to the um small business and the impact that lockdowns have had on them and liberal party would have considered itself the party of small business is this why you're seeing like a former premier for the lnp uh looking at joining the ldp and running for them in the senate this frustration that there isn't a party that is representing small business as well anymore i i certainly think that's part of it um but so, yes, absolutely, the small business is, is not uh, being considered at all. Uh, the Liberal Party is a party of big business now, um, and big mates who can tip in big donations, and they don't care about the small people. But also just not, not just business, it's uh, the ordinary workers as well, people who, who've been abandoned by both our major parties um, looking for something else. And Tim Quilty, Northern Victoria MLC for the Liberal Democrats, I wanted to touch base on something we talked about a while ago, uh, the secession plan, if I can call it that, the move to sort of uh, remove regional Victoria from the rest of the state and become its own state, maybe take in a bit of southern New South Wales as well. What's the progress on that? Look, it's it's slow, and and part of the problem is we keep getting locked down every time we try and organise a meeting. We're all back in in lockdown again. Um, But I think... So as well, the lockdowns give it an extra impetus. Um, people all along the border are, be, are realising how bad this is and it's just going to keep going on. Um, and people in New South Wales are annoyed with their government. People in Victoria are annoyed with our government. So the regional areas can come together. And I think, uh, although the lockdowns are slowing us down, it's also pushing it forward. So... Yeah, well, I understand, for instance, the uh, north, in around Mildura, the local police superintendent has had to explain that now you've only got a five-kilometre limit in terms of crossing the border, but uh, if you have to go 30 k's down the road to cross the river, then you're four kilometres into the uh, um, north, new, new South Wales starts once you cross the border. It seems a bit farcical the way they've had to arrange these very strict um, border bubble limits. Oh, it's absolute nonsense, and it's done by bureaucrats in Melbourne, uh, who have never been out there and, and wouldn't understand it um, and don't really care. It's not their problem um, and it just makes no sense at all. And so just sum up that proposal for us, if you could, this idea that there might be a new state that encompasses North, uh, regional Victoria but also parts of southern New South Wales. Is that what your proposal is? Um, absolutely. So uh, uh, the minimum, the smallest size would be uh, southern New South Wales and northern Victoria, but it could take in more parts, western Victoria as well, and it could... Uh, northwest New South Wales. So 
it could be quite a large state with up to 2 million people um, and a, a very viable economy, but just the, the main goal is to separate it away from Sydney and Melbourne, um, from the cities which have become giant black holes sucking all the resources and give control back to the people. Well... Well, during this pandemic where federalism has been really challenged, maybe a new state in the mix could re- reinforce the need for better federalism and representation for people in regional areas. Tim Quilty, MLC, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Well, thanks for having me on.